just wrapped up and I wanted to show you guys how I do a live stream in my office. Now my office used to not look like this. Yesterday I went and I built out, I grabbed some zoom drones, I grabbed an extra monitor, I moved things rewired at an audio board, and so I built this out so one person could run a decently complicated live stream by themselves. As we all know, most of my virtual live streams are all done using Zoom and ATEM switchers. So let's get into it. So out of the whole setup here, there's a lot of important parts, but this laptop right here is the main host for the entire Zoom call. Okay, so this hosts the whole call. It's the master, the admin. We have co-hosts, but then we use breakout rooms and these computers over here are in those breakout rooms. We take a talent in one of the rooms, so we use dual screen mode on the Mac, and these are the old 2015 Macs with the HDMI port, and then I used a Thunderbolt 2 to HDMI on the other side to get two displays out of each laptop, one, two, one, two, and that guy again, one, two. And so this way I can get two people out of each Zoom drone, or if someone's doing a screen share, the second display, will default to being that screen share. So then I really can get one, two, three, and then another three uh, screen shares up there. But that's not how I ran this particular call. This was a DJ. So the DJ was here, he was in his own room. That way I could get individual audio from him. And then I mix minus audio between this room and this room. And I had two talents and a screen share for this show. Again, nothing super complicated, but you do have to essentially route video and audio from one into the other and vice versa without creating a feedback loop. That's where the audio board comes into play. So I picked up an SQ5 Allen and Heath, and this is what I did all my mix minuses with. You do not need something this overkill, but I'm using this for a lot of other things in the future. So I figured it was good to pick up. So we have the main Zoom host, the audio board to manage all of the audio, which is Pro Presenter playback, we had a little spinner wheel with some sound, and then we had the Zoom drones themselves. And to get audio in and out, I grab the focus right, I do an XLR going in, and the quarter inch on the back going out, all the cables around into the back of this guy here. So this handles all my mix minuses. I ran my DJ mix on one, my main zooms on two, and then I had a speaker right here and another speaker over here, and that is just sound in the room. I always do two speakers, and the interesting thing about that is that this speaker was my program feed next to the audio board, and this one over here by the Zoom drones only ever heard this Zoom call. The reason is, when I'm mixing the DJ, I might use this microphone to talk to the talent while the DJ's playing, and I wanna be able to turn down the program mix and talk to my Zoom people and when I'm facing that way, I can hear it through my right ear versus my left ear. So like, that's why I have two speakers, they're not in the same location. And for me, in my brain, it's just really easy to manage where sound is coming from and hearing. And so I had my faders right here. These ran my speakers, okay, because I'm on an aux right there. So these guys ran my speakers so I could turn the whole speaker up and down really easy. And notice that's really close to my seat because audio is very important and I could touch and grab everything there. So the main multi-view here is actually two multi-views. It's a large multi-view, and then I routed multi-view two into multi-view one and got this view here. So I'm not actually using a quad view. This is a single 1080p output that I'm displaying. So it's not the highest resolution, but then again, that's why I have higher resolution monitors that I can monitor everything on just to make sure everything looks clean and clear, including there's the ATEM switcher, my record monitor down here, which is nice and crisp. So that recorded a program feed. For this stream, I did not record ISOs, uh, a little risky, but I went with it. So I did a single record on the video assist down there. The ATEM routed everything essentially into this web presenter and that went to Vimeo and that's how we did our stream. Simple one hour stream to Vimeo. So let's get into the multi-view here. What do I have? I have Zoom Drones 1, uh, this is DJ A, DJ B, Zoom 1 A and B, Zoom 2 A and B. I had a graphics machine. I didn't have anything here, but I had it ready in case I did. Four outputs for my Pro Presenter using the Decklink card. I had a playback, you know, holding slides, video loops, etc. 
Uh, that's also the countdown timer. I had a time clock that I made big over here just to keep myself on time. That's using a stage display, SDI output from the deck link. Then I had a uh, lower third key and fill, and I can use these buttons over here to activate them. So you can see I have the key and the fill down here. Uh, and then on the bottom, media player one, media player two, and those were my outputs that I could just monitor. I had more screens than I actually needed, so I just used them. So that's it for MultiView 2 down here, giving me that 16 boxes. So the really important screens are over here, ME2 Preview, ME2 Program, and the Super Source. So for the Super Source, I did use the Macro Pack for this show. So that allowed me to kind of route everything, pull in different people at different times, and go between them. So that's the macro pack for the super source. Again, we give this away for free so everyone can have that. So ME2, the preview and the program were actually used to feed into ME1. Essentially, all I did was use DVEs to zoom in an image. So you can see here, there's no blue bar. But here and there, there's a blue bar. So I'm using a DVE to zoom in, and then I can simply recall that up into my program. So I'm just zooming into an image a little bit to crop out anything I don't want. I did the same thing over here with a presentation that didn't quite fill the whole screen. So you see how this guy has some headroom? Over here he has far less headroom because he's zoomed in a little bit. So then I could just pull these in without having to worry about zooming into them. So they were just extra sources uh, that I used and got anything that I didn't want out of the stream. Okay, and this was my main control monitor. So this is simply a laptop right there. Uh, and this is the display for that laptop. It is plugged into a deck link in an enclosure. And we have ProPresenter. Uh, we have the ATEM software. And then this was a run of show, just a web browser that I could see everything I needed to here. So that's what I use the control monitor for. Uh, very useful right next to my multi-view, nice and big. And of course, this is running Companion, but I was using three different stream decks and including the Stream Deck Plus, which was cool, but I wasn't really using the knobs. I was testing the knobs for some other things. What I did was depending on what is in my super source, notice there's two boxes. That's box one, that's box two. I highlight box one and two in red, depending on if they're on screen. And then if I pull in a third box, it lets me know what boxes are live on air. This would seem pretty easy to do if I was enabling and disabling the boxes, but in our macro pack, we don't do that. So we don't actually ever uh, enable or disable a screen. We just push it off to the side, which means I can't use the native feedback functions uh, of if it's on air or if it's enabled. So I had to essentially do a bunch of variables where if the box was at a certain point on screen, then turn this box on the Stream Deck red. So that was really useful, it just gave me peace of mind of what's on there. I wasn't gonna touch something or do something that I didn't want, so that was just for feedback, visual feedback. All right, so now let's get into the lower thirds. That's what's happening up here. So on the program feed, I have my super source, and I put my lower thirds on a downstream key and I have a lower third off button, which essentially is just telling ProPresenter over here, go to this one slide without the lower thirds, but with the bugs in the upper hand corner, the logos. So that's what those buttons on the side over here do. So then I can pull up a two box lower third, and as a safety measure, normally what I would do is turn my lower thirds off and full screen someone. But in case I forgot, because that's multiple button clicks and a lot of things happen in a live show, in case I forgot to do that, I did program a button click to also take off any lower thirds. It was a little delayed, but it was a whole lot better than possibly making a mistake and having it stay on screen for any longer than I wanted. So that was just a nice workaround, and then I could lower third someone else just like that. So, and pull the lower third off. And of course, if I actually transitioned, I can just take the lower thirds off altogether using my downstream key. That was just a quick little thing I added for the super source macros to uh, keep me from getting myself into trouble. 
And finally, the last stream deck over here, this was my cut bus. Uh, so, you know, I can pull anything into preview or program from here. I can hit my auto and go on air. I can uh, use my upstream keys, which I didn't need any for this show, but I did use my downstream key to take things on and off of live air. And then we have the zoom drones. These monitors are 43 inch monitors. Each one can take four HDMI inputs and then I can route them to any point on the screen. So I don't have to worry about too much how I wire it. I just plug it all in and then I can configure it how I want. So up here I had the web presenter that just allows me to see if I'm on air going live, if there's any problems. Web presenter was right here. I loaded everything up. And so when I was ready, I just clicked the on air button. So that was super easy. Then this is an extended display, two extended displays, two extended displays, two more extended displays. The speaker, I ran a webcam out from the web presenter into this laptop so he could see a program feed. I ran a separate aux out from the switcher into that ATEM, into this laptop, and that's how they saw program or whatever I needed to show them, but it was programmed most of the time. And then these two are in the same room, so this guy can see because this guy's sending it. Audio, I had the focus rights and I handled my mix minuses there. And that's pretty much it. If you wanna see down here, I do have the ATEM 2ME. I don't face it toward me because all I really need is the display on the front to configure the IP address and then I'm pretty much good. I had a deck link in an enclosure up here with four SDIs going into my switcher and that was for ProPresenter. I do have my UPSs back there for backup batteries because you always gotta stay safe. And then I had my program record and my safety monitor down there just lets me know what I'm sending to program, what I'm recording. I can pull up scopes on it if I need to, but I rarely do that for a virtual live stream like this. And that's the whole setup. And what I really like about this is I have this Milwaukee pack outs with all different cables and stuff in there really close. So if I do have to wire, swap something out, change anything, I can. And I have another table up here for food, snacks. If another person needs to help and call the show, we can work in the room together. And that is the office live stream. So hope you guys like that. I am not leaving my office this way. I kind of set this up for this one show. Uh, we will be doing this show again multiple times, but I'll probably just rebuild or I'll do a different setup for each show just because I like doing that sort of thing. Uh, but I do want my office back to the way it was. So hope you guys like this. Hope that was informative. If you guys have any questions on how to do any of the stuff, let me know in the comments. Feel free to reach out via email. And yeah, thanks for watching.